Hello, everyone. We are here to reveal the truth and our thoughts on the Batman. What's the truth? The truth lies behind the mask. <laughs> Ah, this is Mike Jack 95. This mask was so hard to wear, along with my usual cohorts. Deadpool. Oh. <laughs> Your boy, George Washington. Okay, and uh, we're going to do this review a little different. Um, usually we do the numbers first and whatnot, and then we get our thoughts in, but he has to skadoodle skadoodle really fast, so we're going to get his thoughts out first, and then he's going to dip out. Yes. So Abraham Washington ain't to do. That thing looks horrifying. I'm Batman. That mask is horrifying. I obviously saw trailers for this movie. I don't like watching trailers for movies, but I, I didn't really have much of a choice because they kind of blasted it everywhere. Mm -hmm. I just would like to let you know, uh, obviously, spoiler alert, ba -do, ba -do, ba -do, ba -do. Yep. they don't reveal much in the trailer, which is really nice. That being said, this movie was long, yeah. but... It needed every second mm -hmm. of this movie. I said, as soon as we left the theater, I feel like this is the most relatable Batman. Something I liked that they did in this movie that they didn't do. One of the reasons I missed or wanted a single Batman movie with Ben Affleck was there was no... I'm Batman. But then there also wasn't... I freeze. I'm Batman. When I saw pictures, I was afraid that I wasn't going to like edgy Bruce Wayne. But I actually do like edgy Bruce Wayne because he doesn't feel like angsty teen. He feels like like he doesn't have time to cut his hair. I don't know. It's just like he, he doesn't have time. He's he's so busy. It's it's not like other Batmans. People have said it before. It's not. Oh, my name is Batman. And somebody killed my parents. Let's watch. But it makes parallels to it. It starts off with brutal murder, which is always a good way to start. Um... <laughs> You get to see parts of Gotham in this. Uh, in previous Batmans, a lot of the focus has been on Batman, all his cool stuff, um, Batman having crazy cool stuff. In this one, you can see the stuff that Batman has. It's, it's not super fancy, high-tech, crazy gadgets. Not that it's not, but it's, it, it's not this outlandish, crazy Batman. <laughs> It's like Batman is in the shadows. Batman wears like regular boots. He's wearing pants. His 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 mask is rubber. Um, he, I, you, I love the scene where they 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 hint at his car. Not made yet. He has to make it. His car's not super fancy. It doesn't do crazy stuff. It is super expensive parts maybe because he has money, but he he's also not like a crazy cool gadgets and all this crazy stuff. And he's not super cheesy. He's he's down to earth Batman. But he's also the Batman I miss. The Batman I've only ever got to see in the comics except for a little bit of Ben Affleck. And that is Detective Batman. This idea of Batman being able to walk into a scene and be like, there's something wrong here. And and, and you see Batman's tactician, Batman's uh, uh, brains coming out, his, his ability to observe details and learn really quickly. I really like that in this. Um... It also showed that he was human, because he didn't get everything. In this movie, one of the things that I absolutely hated, it has nothing to do with the movie, but the theater next to us was so fucking loud that we could hear every damn thing from the other theater in our theater, in the quiet parts. It pissed me off. We were also quite a ways back, too. We were. We were quite a ways back, and the seats behind us were blocked. I liked the cinematography of this movie. It was dark. It was edgy. There were reoccurring steps, like Batman enters the the uh, the club scene then Bruce Wayne enters the club scene and you can see, you can see like the difference in between the two how he holds himself how he looks why he's there um, I love the one of the things that I mentioned is Batman meets Penguin Part One and Batman meets Penguin Part Two Part One he's like I'm here to be friendly still beats the shit out of him and the next time he's like I'm literally gonna beat the shit out of you and I'm like yes beat him up uh, Batman goes places. That's, I mention a lot, you probably heard in my other reviews, I'll say, they didn't go anywhere. I like it when people go places. They do things. They're in a different place into another location. I like that Batman stayed true to Batman. 
He was dark, he was edgy, he kept a secret identity, he keeps his rules of code, he has uh, gadgets, he's a gadgeteer, um, he is tactical, he has steps making plans, he's a ninja, he disappears and reappears in different places. I really like that, that if you didn't put that in a Batman movie, you, you're a terrible person. I like in this movie the interaction between Alfred and Batman. I realize that they're taking sort of a revamp style. He doesn't have his bat car yet. Um, he doesn't have a strong relationship with Alfred yet. That, that, that edginess between him and Alfred makes the scene where he's at the hospital you know, more intense, but it also shows the humanness of Batman and why he makes poor decisions. Like, why doesn't he invest in Alfred a whole bunch? Because he's, he's, he's you know, kind of angry at the world and angry at himself. I love the story, and I feel like the overall story is Batman hasn't come to grips with be, being Batman yet, and he's fighting through this. He hasn't, he hasn't, you know, fully found his identity. He's like, I'm vengeance, and he mentions that he's everywhere, but he's using fear. And in the end, he doesn't take his mask off, which is what people have always wanted. Take your mask off, but he takes off the mask of his of his darkness. He's seen out helping people. He's 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 doing things. He lights his torch, and he. He comes into the light. That 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 poeticness in, in the in the the story writing is just beautiful. I like that in this one, Batman can't save everybody. He mentions it at the beginning. I can't be everywhere, and then there are scenes where he's just up in places and terrible things happen, and he's like, I can't be everywhere. You know, I realize my humanity. I realize I can only do so much, but I'm going to try my best to do that. Um, he gives people second chances. I really like that. The dialogue. Fantastic dialogue in this. I mean, it's the same director as the Planet of the Apes movie, I know. so... It's so good. It's so good. At no point do I feel like there's awkwardness. In fact, there's there's lots of, like, grainy edginess, and you feel it. You feel that, it, like, tension in the air, but it's not so much that it makes you zone out. It, it, it pulls you in. There's no awkwardness in, in, like, weird lines that don't make sense or oddly paced things. There was no comedic humor which was good because it wouldn't have any place in this movie the growing of 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 characters relationships through dialogue was done very well you you could tell that they're redoing it he doesn't you know bat you can see batman and um commissioner gordon bonding you can see catwoman and batman having that you know i want to be on the dark side um you know the never make, ending. get life for me i want to be on the good side i want to do stuff together in that fight the you never ending on and off relationship yeah. they always have <laughs> Which is different than other ones where it's just like, Hi, I'm a crazy lady! And, he, and they're like, Oh, you're a crazy lady! Uh, Adam West, Batman. And then, you know, other other ones, oh, Hi, I'm a criminal! I'm trying to get back at society. That's the 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 third movie, uh, Batman Begins Saga. This this is more like a traditional cat Catwoman, I feel. She's not crazy, she's smart, she's intelligent, but she's troubled. And she's trying to do the best that she can, but she's just on the wrong road. At first, I was worried about the head bad guy, Marconi, because that Falcone. guy plays Falcone. <laughs> yes. Sorry, <laughs> my brain. That actor is so cheesy in other movies. I thought it was going to come out. It didn't. He did a good job of portraying his character. Yeah, he's mostly a comedian. Yes, which is why he did a really good job. How about the ending with the other cellmate? Who, yes. Who was that? That was obviously Joker. Are you sure? Well, it's. He laughed. He had before the laugh. You could his stubby yeah. nose, crazy hair, curved cheeks. Well, part of the face. It before could have been. he laughed, I was like, "Oh, is that is that Two Face?" And then and then he after the laugh, I was like, "Okay." Yeah, I didn't know who it was until the laugh. Depending on the comics, depending on the story, it's I like the stories where they're all together in Arkham, where with the storyline where the Riddler breaks the Joker out and they interact with each other, and Riddler goes on this giant rampage. I mean, sorry. uh... Riddler and Joker go on this giant rampage in Arkham City and Batman goes on this crazy breakdown in the comics. I really like that story. And so I don't know if that's the line they're going for, but I like the, the aspect of staying true to them meeting in Arkham. Uh, I did check my watch a couple of times because I was like, how much movie do we have left? Which is usually a sign that the movie's not good. But I was checking it because I was like, this is really, really good. I'm going to have to sleep on it and watch it again before I can save definitively. But this is... Oh, that car scene. Oh, that car is so cool. That's so cool. Oh, just make my little muscle car childhood dreams come true. 
a bit of vroom, 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 vroom. The choreography in this. Um, some old Batmans. It's really cheesy. I mean, it's just Batman. Lately, I've noticed a lot of Hollywood brings out good choreography. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I feel like they did a really good job in this. The way that they did the scenes with the fighting. Um, Batman does a lot of really hard punches. I like that real good thump sound as opposed to pow, pow. <laughs> There was almost too much mysticism in the fact that Batman was able to get from somewhere to somewhere else really fast. I questioned how he was able to get from the tower down really fast. They didn't show that scene. The city is now flooded. Um, my childhood dream better come true. The next one, there better be a bat boat. Better be a bat boat. I didn't miss my bat boat. I want to watch it again right now, which is a 10. Oh, I don't want to give it an 11 because there's there, there are high tier movies that I, I put on 11s. And so, Josh.exe oh, is not I working. I, <laughs> I want to give it a 10.25. I, what did I give Hill House? A solid 10? Yeah. Yeah. Because <sighs> it's 1 to 10 typically. But we've also, you've also rated things as gravy in the past. So I guess you could go over 10. I'm going to give this a solid 10 out of 10 because at least this first watch through, I I, I want to revisit it. I want to revisit it because there was so much in this movie. But, oh, I've never felt this good after a Batman movie before. And I've watched them all. So, you know, I've, I, 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 I'm, I'm not so, like, stoked for what they're going to do next necessarily, but I, like... I feel good after this Batman movie, so I'm going to give it a solid 10 out of 10. I uh, like already. this movie. Uh, Krieger, I want to hear the numbers, and I want to hear your opinion. So far, early critic rating of 418 critic reviews. They put this movie at a 8.5, and the audience of over 10,000 ratings gives it an 89%. I just say the numbers of how many, because sometimes early on, I think last time when we looked at the Scream one, I said it was like almost like a, a high nine. Yeah, and, and there I, was like four critic reviews at that time. I so, put yeah. I put an adjustment because we watched it on like that night too. The current gross box office as of this second is one hundred and thirty four million dollars. Budget? Um, I will give that shortly. Uh, Michael will edit this part. That's a mic gasm for um, you. <laughs> 200 million. It's making money. Money, yeah. money, money. It, it definitely did not have all the hype that the uh, uh, Dark Knight had. Oh, that's, that's, because Dark Knight it, Returns? that's because this film oh. was delayed for two years. I know, but that Dark Knight Returns, there was like so much like publicity all over. But it was also the time of movies. Movies were high at that point. Um, my perspective of the movie, first of all, it's a Batman movie. It's a superhero movie. So there's a fan behind it. And there's certain people that will disagree with certain things. So I'm judging this movie, um, number one, because there is a fandom and they have redone Batman so many times, I'm comparing this Batman with other Batmans. The first thing I look at is character design, if they fit the mask well, um, if they fit the character well, if they're believable, um, and then also Batmobile and their gadgets are believable. For this one, I don't know how I feel about the suit quite yet. Because at sometimes I really like it, and sometimes I don't. Because he, he seems awkward and clunky in it at times. But it's also he's mobile as well, and when he's walking, you can hear it like armor piercing. Obviously, he survived like multiple gunshots at fully automatic at point blank range. It's Tank. a little weird how mobile he is in that. Yet it it has to be. We've seen it in previous Batman games and movies where he starts out with a different tier of a suit that's less armored. The, the, it's it's a thing that you battle with. You ever, I remember playing the Telltale games. You started earlier, and what's the guy's name that usually Lucius? Lucius over time was giving you uh, more upgrades for armor, but he's it's a warning. It's going to slow you down a little bit. But in the movie, he was doing a lot of acrobatics that would be difficult. I'm interested. In, it's one of those things where it's like, oh, he's rich. He has money. He's he has. He also suit. pushed that giant wooden table across the room. Yes. <laughs> so, um, and his character's not that ripped. Batman design suit alone, um, it's an iffy for me. It is definitely above Clooney bat suit. I love the cowl. It's just the armor to 
other part ratio is a little weird for me. Um, so it's 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 a it's good. I don't think it's like a perfect thing, but also with the the character of Batman, I don't think there's much you can do to make that perfect because you need to make him where he's not where he can take bullets, and he also does all his acrobatic stuff. So it's hard to kind of critique that point. And find the happy. Medium. He was definitely a heavy Batman. Um, I think that fucking Batmobile was fantastic. I think the highlight of this movie was that goddamn car chase scene. That was one of the yes. best car chase scenes I've ever seen. Other than the unrealistic ramp, because that was pure luck. That was just pure luck and <laughs> yes. beautiful timing. Like, that timing. was movie bullshit. That was beautiful timing, though. <laughs> if great. this movie was realistic and not a superhero movie, he's dead. That's the thing about superhero movies. If you try to think of it with realism and think too hard... It doesn't make sense, and it's oh, stupid. The parachute but, scene? But, yeah. <laughs> but super... Yeah, the fucking Michelin Man goddamn <laughs> thing going down. Oh, that's a fucking negative for me. <laughs> that was some stupid he, shit. He, yeah, he had to be broke. Previous Batman movies, when he needed to glide, they were just like, hey, his suit's gliding for him. It's a, <laughs> it's a super suit. Bullshit. Anyways, so, superhero movies. You can't think about it too hard. So I think about it too hard every time I watch it. So there are multiple things in this movie that are stupid. That don't make sense. Especially the fully automatic, like multiple people shooting Uzis at point blank range and not one of those bullets hit him at all. Or the shotgun. Even if the, even if that armor is bullet resistant, mm-hmm. it's still going to knock the wind out of him or something at some he point. He did. He lay there and went, <clears throat> Oh yeah, but what about when he still had the strength to hold his very heavy armor with one hand over a grappling thing? I Also, I feel like he would have survived that fall. I would have just let go before he just let the guy hold the gun to him at point blank range where he stares at him I like a fucking was... emo, dude. So, superhero movies are really fun as long as you don't pay too much attention. So, I'm going to ignore that stuff because it's a superhero movie. Granted, a superhero movie for me will never get a 10 stars because you have to look at it with that lens where you don't pay attention too hard because things don't make sense. Um, let's talk about the story and character of Batman and how, how well he does. The actor for him, I felt like, played a much better Batman than I expected in the bat suit, I I appreciated his his Bruce Wayne. Who, that was like he kind of if you guys like the Venom movies where he was just like he looked like absolute dog shit <laughs> throughout the entire movie. Same if I was probably in that situation and obsessed like he was and all that stuff and that's why he looks like shit and he doesn't care about anything. It's just I found it. I get the story of Batman. Everyone always really likes Bruce Wayne, but it's really hard to keep your secret identity when you literally look like shit all the time, <laughs> and you're being like, it's not hard to figure out who the hell Batman is at that point. I think he was a very good. He was probably he did not look awkward. Um, Christian Bale to me, when I rewatched the all of his Batman ones, he looked awkward in the suit, the way they designed the suit, and he but he played a really good Bruce Wayne out of the Batman suit. I feel like if they were to merge those two, that'd be perfect. Um, but I also, at the same time, I didn't think he was as good as Bruce Wayne, but I also thought that he was a good Batman, and they built on that well. So that's another one that's okay for me in this film. Okay, so here's my thing, and this is going to be a thing. They spent a lot of time war building in this film. I think they spent too much time, made the movie too long, but, um... I feel like there's stories that are fleshed out that they've already done. I'm glad that they didn't do the parents dying scene, too, because they probably could have fucking fit that in there, too. I don't know about you guys, but the only thing that's been more fleshed out than the parents dying scene in Batman is the goddamn Bat- Batman Catwoman thing. Like, I felt like I was watching every single Batman movie and game I've ever played that always has that stupid dynamic. Um, I li- really like Riddler in it. Um, the whole thing... If they're not going to do his parents' murder, but they still involve, involve the parents' murder as a major plot point in the movie, was a step back for me. Um, I know that they have to keep to source material, but I really... I feel like, as far as Batman movies goes, there's a big segment of Batman movies that haven't been covered that we could cover instead of stuff that's already been covered. Like a Red Hood movie. I think that this part of the timeline has already been covered enough in the cinematic universe that we could have some great fucking movies while some good actors are still young. Dean and Sam as well. Mm -hmm. Um, (laughs) Hello! There's so much good content that they can do, but they're choosing to rehash this stuff that that they've already done. I just feel like DC and Warner Brothers are just really bad about fleshing out story, but they know that this is something that 
works and that they can do. I don't know. I feel like they, they just pushed all of this into one movie. It, it kind of reminds me of the Friday the 13th thing, but on a much bigger scale, where they just tried to do too much in the wrong area in one movie. Um, I mean, it was all over the place. The whole thing was, for me. Um, but I'm conflicted because the scenes were really good, the way they did flesh out that story. If all those other movies didn't exist and the games and everything that already covered this didn't exist, this is a pretty good storytelling, other than probably two casting that I would change. The Catwoman one was, at first, I hated it, but she kind of grew on me as the movie moved on, so maybe. Um, and then Falcone. That, <laughs> yeah. That guy, I could not take him seriously. And Falcone, Falcone is usually a heavier set person as mm -hmm. well. Not some skinny, tall Italian guy. With a mustache. With a mustache. Yeah. Who always plays comedic roles when this is supposed to be a very, very serious character. Very serious. Very dangerous character. I feel like they did bad on all of those fronts, but the, the, the choreography and the way they did the film was good. I feel like they did not need to do three hours for a goddamn setup film. And I know you think it's not a setup film... But it's a totally a setup film, especially the thing with the Joker thing at the end, leading on to the next one. We don't need another Joker. There wasn't thank you. a good conclusive ending to this either. Like, it, like it didn't feel. I spent three hours in a movie theater and I didn't get a satisfying ending. I got rehashed storylines that I don't care about that that leave it open to the next movie. Not like, oh, well, this was a good story. They finally saw the Rid no, the Riddler's in jail mm -hmm. and Arkham with with Joker. Is what we're presuming for another movie, and he's still out there, and all of the all of Gotham is all fucked up, and it's not as and it's not a satisfying ending whatsoever. So, yeah. but the way they did the movie was quite well. So, in my opinion, um, I, I'm putting this at a seven point eight out of nine because it's not being a ten because it's a superhero movie. A seven point eight out of nine for me to start things out. I really have to say that it was really refreshing getting to see that version of uh, Penguin. We didn't need to see too much of him, but from what I saw on screen was probably by far the closest like interpretation that they could get to ma like to match like the the content that they're going off of, and the fact that that is Colin Farrell in a fat suit blows my fucking mind. <laughs> Because, you, you, look up a photo of Colin Farrell. You cannot tell that's him. It is such a good and good interpretation of it, and I fucking love it. And No, no disrespect to Danny DeVito. I love De, DeVito's version of it as well, but my God, this was a good version of Penguin for, for this definitely. Goes, this goes with that. Uh, Colin Farrell stated he went to Starbucks to try out his prosthetics and makeup for Penguin for the first time. Nobody recognized him despite getting a couple of stares from other people. There you go. Nobody knew it was Colin Farrell. <laughs> I want to talk about the Riddler. The one little thing I did not like is that I kind of felt like when he was doing like the videos sending into the news and whatnot and everything, it felt like they were trying to replicate the, um, the Heath Ledger video the Joker sent it when they sent the clip into the news and he's like, ah, oh, just make Batman take off his mask and turn himself in. But in the comics, don't, doesn't Riddler do that quite a bit? Not over-exaggerated like that. I felt like, like, there were bits of it where he was acting like the Riddler, but there was a lot of bits where he was trying to act like Ledger's Joker. And it's weird. But, comparing it to Jim Carrey, that's, I would prefer this Riddler over Jim Carrey as much as I love Jim Carrey's Riddler I love it it's just it's, it's for a funny take yes I would honestly have to say I kind of agree with the Catwoman statement that Krieger made because I feel like they've done this in every fucking uh, series they did it in the original four they did it in the trilogy and they done it again I mean, come on. <laughs> and in the multiple video games. Oh, we never really talked about Commissioner Gordon. Um, I was really intrigued that they uh, decided to go for the different route and make Commissioner Gordon uh, African-American, which you just tore down half of my sheet. Thanks. Uh, I'll put it back up. <laughs> no, you won't. I'm tired of this. Bring back my red-bearded, beautiful people. I was, uh, was unsure about, uh, uh, by it at first, but... I actually thought that the actor did a very, very good job as 
uh, Lieutenant or Commissioner Gordon and whatnot. Um, I still feel like, personally, I liked Gary Oldman more than him, but for what was given, I actually liked this Gordon quite a bit. Uh, didn't really make any connections with Falcone. He just seemed like your typical mafia boss you would see in an average Joe mafia show. Like, which, it was nothing special about the character except, oh, I did this. Which is supposed to be the opposite of that. Falcone is supposed to be a presence that owns everyone. He didn't really do much. P Penguin felt like he made a bigger presence than Falcone did. And Penguin didn't do jack shit. Except almost got fucking destroyed and flattened. And when he got fucking flipped a thousand times in that car. <laughs> the big one. Uh, Batman. Slash Bruce Wayne. This was this was my biggest concern about the movie. Is is Robert Pattinson good enough to be Batman? Because I know for sure that this film was on the writing room floor for at least four or five years. It originally was going to be a Ben Affleck movie, and Affleck was going to have creative control of it. And then Warner Brothers took it away from him, and then they gave the rights to they gave the director director's rights to Matt Reeves, and they were going to keep Affleck on the project. But then after so much hate that he got, Affleck ended up quitting, so they hired a fucking vampire to do. <laughs> Who turned into a bat? Um, I do have a random interrupting cool uh, trivia. That sheet's gonna bother me, but continue. <sighs> the four note musical theme. The, uh, also called The Batman, mm -hmm. is composed of the first four notes of John Williams' famous The Imperial March from Star Wars. That's okay, interesting. Okay, it sounds similar, and I wanted to say something, but I didn't want to be called a, a, a goober. The only thing I found interesting was it didn't start, they didn't start at the very beginning. They didn't start it where he's like aged and disheveled and old and grumpy and brr. This Batman was still kind of fresh but he's been doing it for two years so i found that take very interesting because it's the first time they've actually done something like this with the batman character i liked that take i liked that spin it added to um him being kind of reckless with like his fighting and everything like he's not like perfectly countering all the moves he's getting shot he's getting punched he's getting kicked he's getting beat up but he's still getting the upper hand for the most part i liked that aspect the part where he's escaping the, the precinct and he gets on top of the roof and then he gets on top of the gargoyle and he like freaks out when he's about to fall off the edge. That's like another element that I, I saw that was very interesting. If we don't talk about the flight suit that he had, which was a good, I guess, replacement for a, a, a new way of gliding. Because I guess he hasn't developed a new way to glide better. Michelin man suit. But just the fact that like he got on top of the roof and he like ran to the edge of the gargoyle and started freaking out. That's like normal like natural instinct like when for something like that to happen i really liked that they showed that in a two-year-old batman and everything i do agree with the part where you liked bruce wayne looking like shit and disheveled and like grouchy and angry all the time but i also want to say that i feel like pattinson's batman or not batman bruce wayne was a little boring just a little like, yes, I get it. He's been out all night doing shit and whatnot. He's tired. He looks like he just been running a marathon 48 hours a fucking day or whatever. But I... There were times where I was like, okay, I understand this pain. I understand everything and whatnot. I can kind of get to the get with the character. But there was also times where I was like, what the fuck is he doing? My only complaint about the bat suit is that I felt like his frontal lobes of his cranium looked like he got fucking stuck coming out of the fucking vagina. That's very weird. It's just the it just that's the only problem I had. It's just everything else of the bat suit looked all right with me, minus the Michelin Man thing. But I did not like how like his forehead was like pushed out like two inches. It looked weird because I've never seen a bat suit with that kind of forehead in a movie adaptation. Also, it's always been like straightforward and like curved like a normal like human skull. One thing that I will disagree with you on, Krieger, is I felt like the film and the runtime was actually paced out perfect, like like perfectly. I thought the pacing of this film was actually 
perfect for the amount of runtime we had because it told the story, it didn't rush anything, nothing felt choppy at all, nothing felt like it was randomly slapped in there in the middle of a goddamn movie. It felt like it was a fluid story all the way from start to finish and whatnot. Yeah, like, like the director knew I how liked long it. it had to be to tell a good story, not like he had to make it so that people didn't get bored. It actually looked, it actually, it, it looked like it flew, flew like, it flowed well um, for whatnot. I, I disagree with both of you. I would say, and from another sp- standpoint, though, to kind of back up Krieger's uh, opinion on it, I can see why he thinks that the pacing and the runtime is not good because number one, it it had changed writing, creative writing differences. It changed directors. It changed actors. It was on fucking delay for two and a half years because of COVID. Because Robert Pattinson was being frustrating with the director he also got injured multiple times he also wasn't keeping up with his shape with the character there were so many problems Um, going on with the development of this movie also story there was a lot going on in this movie a lot going on in this movie Mm -hmm. from multiple different angles that i don't think that and also the real the riddles were kind of a stretch and they're all over the place and i know they're meant to be confusing but they they make the the already riddled plot line even more riddled mm-hmm. i didn't like riddles, riddler's mask because it was riddler, riddler was never other than like the little eye mask he was never portrayed as having a full frontal covered mask which made him feel more like unabomber and less like you know more like terrorist and less like creative genius oh no i feel like i've ran this my opinion down into the ground and I'm not going to say this is a perfect Batman film. It is not a perfect Batman film and everything, but it's also not a bad Batman That'd film. Be Batman and Robin. I am honestly going to give this film... I would say with my complaints about the little things here and there, and I would, be, I would actually nail it down with a number, I'm going to have to say a seven and a half. Because, like, again... There was a lot. Of, there was a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of things I liked about the movie, but there was also quite a few things that I thought they could have done differently. But again, that's just development hell. This film was riddled with development hell, and no pun intended. like, again, to kind of go back on a statement I said, this film did did flow pretty well for a storyline, in my opinion. But I could also see from his perspective, you can tell this film went through development hell. Like, you can see both sides of it, of the coin. Again, no pun intended. But, the camera is about dead, that's why I decided to get my number out real quick, so... Both sides of the coin and the riddles. So, um... Do you have any more trivia do you want to add, or are you done? No, I scrolled through it. Okay, uh, so, um... This is Mike Check 95 along with... Not Deadpool, uh, Krieger Margin 1. And the man behind the curtain who's ripped it down twice. And no, I'm not the Wizard of Oz. And we are signing out from the bat. And the cat? Or the mat? The cat and, the cat. and don't forget about the hat. <sighs> Goodbye.